Are you looking for a way to help your brick and mortar business drive more traffic and increase your sales? Look no further than the Receipt Paper Podcast. In this podcast, Joanne and Kyle provide their sage advice on how to make your brick and mortar store the hottest spot in town. Whether you're just launching a new business or trying to grow an existing one, these informative episodes will leave you inspired. In each episode, Joanne and Kyle take on a different topic related to running a successful business. They offer practical tips based on their own experience as owners of multiple brick and mortar locations. So whatever challenges you're facing, they have actionable advice for you. From finding a location and executing your build out to merchandising and customer experience to sales and marketing, Joanne and Kyle have you covered. With helpful advice from these experienced entrepreneurs, you are sure to learn how to increase your sales and have your business running out of receipt paper in no time. Let's dive right in. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to episode nine of the Receipt Paper Podcast. My name is Kyle Strubing. I'm here with my lovely business partner, life partner, all things partner, Joanne Mester, soon to be Strubing. Jojo, baby, how are we doing? We are doing great. How are you? I'm doing what? Part two. Yeah, this week. This week is, is part, part two. two about experiential retail. Yes, I am excited to continue on from last week's episode. It's such a big topic. We could probably do 10 parts to this topic, but super valuable one. We'll talk real fast to get through it, though. So you don't have to go through 10 episodes. We'll talk real fast. This is the set. We're doing the second one right now. I'm highly caffeinated, so I'm ready to go. Oh, I'm excited. I thought, gotcha. I, so I thought part one was part one was great. Um, some real good examples that you guys can take, um, take and use right away. Um, but definitely, definitely excited for this one too. Yeah. So last week we focused on explaining to you what experiential retail is. Just to recap, it's really creating that brand story, ways that you can provide a feeling for your customers, ways for them to engage what they see, what they hear, what they touch, what they taste, what they smell, how they are going to leave your business feeling. Right. So we walked you through um, various examples of businesses that do this now and we also walked you through how we do this in our own business. So if you didn't catch that episode, Pause this one, go back and listen to that one before we dive in to this topic today. It's it's a great listen and will give you a really good idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about experiential retail. Um, but today we are going to focus on actual ways that you can implement this into your business. So real excited about this topic. Let's get it going. Before we dive in, I wanted to give you one reminder to join us for the Brick and Mortar Business Bootcamp. We're doing a four-day live experience where we are going to dive into a ton of awesome topics. If you are just getting started out in brick and mortar or you have a dream of opening a business or if you already own a business but you want to kind of go back to the basics or maybe you're looking to expand or relocate. This will be a great boot camp for you. Um, we're going to take four days with you where we do just an hour, hour and a half a day um, to walk you through some topics like validating your business idea, um, setting that foundation to really differentiate yourself and your market, how to find a location, how to fund your business. And we're even doing a really fun mood board workshop where you can really take what we're talking about here as far as experiential retail and really map it all out um, as far as that experience that you want customers to get in your business. So register for the brick and mortar business boot camp. No push-ups required. Oh, um, push-ups required. You can find that link in the show notes at masterbrickandmortar.com slash nine. So can't wait so to see you there. Nine already. Moving right along. All, all right. right. Let's dive in today. So 
we're really diving into topics of how you can create an experience, ways that you can engage with customers in your business. Um, you know, some of the examples we gave you last week were really grandiose examples of, you know, things like Arctic chambers and, um, you know, different terrains in the building to provide an experience. Um, but there are simple, easy ways that you can start implementing this that, will really set your business apart with just these little things. Right. Yeah. So let's dive right in. We've got um, about seven or eight uh, examples or ways for you to implement this in your store. So number one is sampling. Sampling stations or sampling process, some sort of demonstration or sampling. Um, Kyle, why don't you share how we do this in our business? I mean, for so when we start off as just products that was sampling we have a motto right we you, you sell what you sample flat out um that, that's just one of the things that we've that we live by and we you can track we'll just be hey you know we'll even have conversations and say man we didn't sell gummies at all this you know this past month well guess what we're sampling the next month we're sampling gummies it's a way to kind of push different inventory through um you know, and it gives them opportunities, even if they're not coming in for that specific reason. Oh, hey, I got some samples of this or, or whatever. It allows for, for different things like that. Um, but what they do is when they come in, um, we we would, they would come in and say, hey, look, I'm trying to, you know, get rid of anxiety, whatever the case may be. And as we're talking about the product or talk about them, I'm sitting there and making them a sample. Um, our biggest product when we first started was you know, the specific, the specific kind of supplement that we used. And it was a huge differentiator. Uh, it, it, that specific one was a huge differentiator for us within the business and, and really set us apart. So while they're talking, um, I'm taking notes, but I'm, I'm literally making them a, almost a little cocktail in a, in a Dixie cup. And we would sit there and I would drop drop the the supplement in and I would show them yeah. what it was and I would teach them and say, hey, look, this is, you know, you see what's going on in here is they would see the product yeah. dissolve into the um into the water. You see what's going on here? Well that's not an oil. An oil would clump and you kind of go over how it's a little bit different talking negatively per se, but just saying, here are some of the differentiators or here are some of the differences in what, you know, compared to what you're, you're really thinking. And then you hand them the sample, they take the sample. And, and as that goes on, you kind of progress them through the rest of the rest of the customer experience. But in the beginning, the samples were key, yeah. especially in what, in what we did, because they would then get an idea. And a lot of times you could almost solve the, solve the problem while they were yeah. there. It was pretty neat. It definitely was. I think the key to the sampling process is educating as you're sampling. Right. It's really think of it as a demonstration. You're showing them how to use the product or you're sampling multiple products to where they can see the difference in different products. Um, you know, obviously this works well for like food, beverage, supplements, things of that nature. But, it, you know, also for those of you that have products maybe like apparel or um decor think of dim ways that you can demonstrate yeah. like demonstrate how easy it is or demonstrate putting together some outfits for people um demonstrate you know putting some decor together look uh this is how i put things in groups of threes to look like in my home, some sort of demonstration process or sampling process that you're teaching them something while you're doing it. You're either teaching them about the product or teaching them a tip for how to better style clothing or how to the better industry. Yeah. 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 How to better, um, you know, decorate your household or I don't know why those keep. Well, why, why like, this one is $60 where the other one is $30. You know what I mean? Like when we, I'll look at a, a hoodie or something on the rack or whatever. And if somebody were to sit here and say, well, Yes, this one is a little bit more expensive, but look at how this is stitched differently. Yeah. This uses feel this different fabric. material. Yeah. yeah and, and feel it, see it. It that it it it's a, like you said, like the opportunity to educate while they're seeing, sampling, touching, feeling is it's it's key. Yeah. So typically like when people first walk into our business is when we will sample. Right. We you know, we don't wait 
for it. We, right. we do it right away. But don't just hand them a sample and then let them continue shopping. Use that process to demonstrate how to take the product or educate on the product. Mm -hmm. Like that, that is key to really getting them to experience the product or what they're doing. Um, you know, let's say you were in a hardware store and you walked in and somebody started demonstrating different paints. Like, look at what this paint looks like compared to this paint right. next to it. I mean, there's so many things you can do. So no matter what your product is, it it really is a great way to do that. And, and you can even do this with services, like provide them a demonstration or a tour. Um, Kyle touched on this a little bit last week, but um, you know, we take people on tours to show them the rooms. Like when people walk into our business as walk-ins, and even if we don't have, um, you know, availability on a schedule, we'll at least walk them through show a tour. Something. We'll show them a tour. Yeah. If we have some rooms open, we'll show them what we do have. Um, you know, just having that demonstration process, right. some sort of tour, sampling, demonstration. It, but and, and the point is too. One thing that we've done well is that it all aligns, right? The same prop, the the service or the different products are all going to kind of help with the same thing too. So you're not like, oh, hey, you came in for a hoodie. Here's a pair of skis. You know, like it doesn't, it has to kind of align too, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move on to the next way to create an experience in your space. And this one's really cool. It's by creating co-creation stations. So this is a new thing we're seeing a lot lately. Um, we helped a client um, that was opening a boutique and we were talking to her about co-creation stations and she came up with this really cool way to have a station where people can create their own jewelry. So they're like making their own earrings. They can make their own bracelets. She has some pre-made, of course, that they just want to buy. But if they want to really sit there and experience the shop um they can create and she'll sit there and right. create it with them i thought it was so cool such a creative idea something totally different i mean she said that she's having people come in and create like gifts and stuff that are really personalized you know with initials and all these things loved that idea um when we were another example of this is when we were in Crested Butte last year, we um, went to an apothecary. I can't ever say that. Apothecary. apothecary. Um, and they had a station where you could make your own shampoo, conditioner, or lotion. So you would pick out the size bottle that you want. And then they yeah. have a bunch of different essential oils you could add in there based on, you know, what smells you liked. And I thought it was so neat. Like it was a really great way to experience this and great way to be able to customize things like, Hey, I don't want this huge bottle. I just want a small little thing, or, you know, maybe I do want to buy it bulk. Like and it gives them buy-in too. It gives the customers buy-in to feel like they've created something as well. They have some you know, they feel like they've, yeah, like they've helped create, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So how can you do co-creation stations or have people, you know, really experience that, you know, if you're, I think of like, you know, the hardware stores where you could, you know, have them make something or build something, um, you know, that kind of goes into a topic we'll be talking about later with classes, but yeah, co-creation, really cool. I think it's a new thing a lot of businesses are starting to implement, but think of ways of how you can co-create with your product in your store. For sure, for sure. The next one is uh, video, visuals, and graphics. Um, this was big for us. We, uh, the when you sell kind of, I try not to get into too, too much inside baseball, but it, the graphics set the tone and it also, it, it was very big for us for education and, and we enjoy, you know, if they don't know what they're getting into or can't see all of the opportunities to what, what there is to purchase, it just doesn't, it, it just doesn't add up. The two, two ends kind of almost don't touch um, where, you know, and as we've made shifts, we've seen a lot of difference in this is our business has shifted. So we've kind of, this is something that I've, Kind of champion moving forward, at least when we got out of the serve, we got a lot less product based and more service based. That was really key. You know, show them a menu, show them a menu, show them the product that's about, you know, an opportunity to buy the thing that's a thousand dollars, you know, and that kind of sets the value for it. And we could talk about that later, but 
if they don't know that it's not available, then they're never going to purchase it, right? Um, and then also the education aspect too, which allows you to, I know a lot of times we had a, a really popular stand or a really popular poster that we had mounted. Um, and it was really good for, for overflow. When we got super busy and one person was running the store while well, I'm sampling and doing this, you can kind of point them in that direction when they had the sample and they could look at the posters and stuff. And it was almost a soft sale. Yeah. And I think really taking visuals and graphics to the next level of using them to promote that feeling. So, you know, when they walk into the store, are they seeing a fireplace on the screen or a tranquil mountain on the screen? Or if you are all about fitness, are they seeing someone running on the screen and working out on the screen? Like those visuals will promote a feeling in your business, um, whether it's a picture or um, a video or a graphic, um, even quotes. You know, when you walk into a place and they have a quote on the wall, that's a good one. That promotes a feeling or you know some sort of tagline like um there's so many little ways that trigger our brains to start thinking of an experience in a certain way and if you can use those little things throughout your space um it can really impact the experience that people have there right yeah for sure it sets the tone it gets you in that mindset that's I, I agree it can motivate you and or it can bring you down it's it's key for sure yeah yeah all right. Another way is um, music. If you are not playing music in your business, you are missing out on setting setting up the entire tone of your store. Right. Like if you know, it's crazy when I walk into our store and there's not music on. Like I guilty. I cannot. It, it's like changes the whole experience it does. for me. I'm like, whoa, like this is totally different business, you know? So, you know, think about the type of music that you want to play. You know, do you want some upbeat music that gets people in that I'm shopping with my best friends feeling? Do you want that feeling like I just walked into the most tranquil spa ever meditation music feeling? So whatever feeling you're trying to create use music to enhance that feeling uh it, it definitely it sets the vibe right like the kids say you want yes. to set the vibe um in in a lot of times it depends in the morning it's you know i i it, it involves throughout the day too at least and kind of based on my energy i mean granted we're not going to pump any metal in there but you know, I mean, if you're feeling a little upbeat, I, I, I kind of, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll pivot. It just depends on kind of how we feel Saturdays because the energy in the store is is up and moving. People are coming in and out. I, I, I'm not a big fan of the, you know, the coffee house and stuff. So we turn it up a little bit. It's it's kind of wherever, wherever your energy is at, whatever, whatever the place needs. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, you know, look, see how you can enhance that story, that feeling. Right. That you're trying to show. Right. All right, moving on to number five. This one's an easy one, but very important one. And it's it's what your store smells like. So, um, you know, I know some stores you can't have like candles. We break the rules and do that sometimes. Yeah. But, uh, you know, candles, diffusers, just air fresheners. What does it smell like? You know, you can use scent to really trigger a feeling, you know, if you really want to get to the you know, lavender relaxing or more citrusy, energetic feeling, but what your source smells like will enhance the experience right. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, they say that with the first seven seconds, you want to greet them or whatever, but that, that it's more to that too. You want the first couple minute that, that you want to hit them with that. And that yeah. really kind of helps bring them in. You know, we, we use the cleaning products in the back. So we will kind of mask a little bit of that. And don't get me wrong smelling clean is fantastic yeah. but when you walk in you, you don't need to smell you know it's better to smell like bleach than garbage don't yeah. get right but when you hit with the bleach scent right away it can be a little overpowering yeah. you know i think on that note like you have to think about the other side like if it does not smell good in your store that will set trigger a feeling well, I'll never come. not good like i've walked in the stores that you know and i know these commercial units have horrible plumbing and i feel for these units but you know you'll walk in and you just have this horrible plumbing issue smell like yeah i'm trying to buy soap or something and it smells like a roast beef sandwich it's, it's, it's just, just not and it 
if the smell instantly makes you think that the place is dirty, dirty. even if it's not. Right. But you, but you get that feeling. Right. And so you have to be careful of those weird smells or, you know, if you're next to a restaurant, is that smell coming into your unit? If right. it is, you need to find a way to mask that. Right. Like, because, you know, you, you may, or, you know, depending on what you're trying to promote, you know, if but yeah, just be very care- careful of those smells. They, makes such a large impact on the way that people feel and experience your business for right. sure for sure and we use you know, diffusers candles yeah you know th- things like that um and we, I mean, we sell the candles too <laughs> another thing yeah. like, oh that smells great oh that's available in the corner <laughs> whatever. as a matter of fact we're running a buy one get you know yeah. whatever it, it if you you know if you sell the candles light the candles but, yeah. yeah yeah that's another way to kind of demonstrate your product yeah, right sure. For sure. Um, absolutely love that okay so that was an easy one um the next is beverages or food and i know a lot of people um are weary for this because you know different permits and stuff so look into the permits that are required but even just offering something simple like drinks when people walk in um if you don't sell food and stuff right um can really enhance the, the experience when people are walking around we we do free drinks in our store we do free, we, we're big on free drinks you walk in whether you're doing a service or a product we like you know our regulars they now just walk in and grab a drink you know um but having something in their hand you know our that they can start tasting they can start you know just feeling like it immediately makes them feel valued. And I'm not saying you need to give these things away for free, but having something extra there, Hey, we do have, um, offer, you know, tea on tap for while you're shopping. Would you like um, some tea or coffee today? Um, you know, having that, going that extra mile to enhance that experience, they're going to feel like that experience is high end, you know, like, it does a couple things. I think even like biologically as well, right? When you have something in your hand, think about like at a party, you want to stay. When you have a drink, it gives you something to do. It it does something to your brain that you're not, you don't have this want to leave or to go. It, it just, it, it is, it, for lack of a better term, it grounds you. Yes. Um, the next thing is it is it creates reciprocity. So they now, because you've given them something, you now feel obligated or yeah. you will, it's been shown that you will spend more money. Yeah. If, yeah. And yes, you gave them a dollar, a drink that cost you a dollar fifty. They're now spending an additional 20 or maybe yeah. they weren't thinking about, but they now feel that they have to spend some money. Yeah. So it's just, it just makes you close better. It's just whatever. Same um, thing with samples, right? Samples of a, a mm-hmm. bottle of water that you got at Walmart. Like yeah. just, it, yeah. you know, on a hot Texas day, like, Hey man, grab a bottle. Hey, what do you think? You got any questions? Da, 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 da. Dude, if you want, grab a bottle of water. Hey, and then that allows you to, to also, they feel engaged and you can go do something else. If let's say you have something going on and back, it's just another kind of touch point. Yeah. If you're offering a service, I, you should be offering water at the minimum um, when people walk in. Like it just enhances the, from the, it sets that tone from the get go that I'm being taken care of. Right. Yeah. We've thought of this. We got you. This is a next level experience. This is, you know, this is something that we've thought of. This is, you know, something above and beyond. Yeah. Sure. And like I said, that reciprocity. That's such a good that's point. A big thing. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And we, put, I mean, we put yard signs on free drinks. We use free drinks yeah. for a lot. Free drinks are big. But free drinks are really big for yeah. us. Yeah. And like I said, you don't have to offer drinks for free, but right. I we're big fans of that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, see the value and it's so inexpensive right. for what we think uh we get in return so um but any sort of beverages and food in your space like you know even having like a snack bar or a coffee and tea bar um you know maybe throw in we do like kombucha on tap right you know things like that where people like Kyle said, when they have something in their hand, they're more likely to stay. And while, you know, you don't necessarily want them staying all day, you want them to stay. Better than them not coming at all, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. You want them to feel, you know, maybe you have a little uh, bar table where people can sit down and, 
enjoy their beverage or a granola bar with a friend. You know, you're building a space where people feel comfortable now. They're being fed. They're drinking something, you know. Yeah. Um, like, it just... It, it will totally change the whole experience in your store. I mean, would you, you would, when somebody came into your house, you would offer them something to drink. I mean, you yeah. want some water. I don't have much, but I got a bottle of water, you know, something yeah. like that. It just, it's, it's just a no brainer. Yeah. Using beverages and food, great way. Yeah. So, so far we've gone over, we've got sampling stations, co creation stations. You can use videos, visuals, um, and graphics. We've got audio or music. Mm -hmm. uh, using diffusers, or candles, really focusing on the smell of your store, uh, making sure it's not a negative smell. Um, we've got beverages or food. Next is um, creating a sense of community or gathering. And I think that you can do this really well with, you know, classes or events. Events and classes. So last week, Kyle spoke about um, the gun range that he, their experience of have hosting classes and how it really creates this sense of community for them there. Um, I think it's so, so true. Like when we first, the first year we opened, um, we held classes probably every month. We did a class or an event once a month. Yeah. Sure. And we would, and our space was small. So if you think your space is too small, I'm going to challenge you on that because our space, I mean, we're talking about like 500 square feet and we were packing in 30 people. Yeah, I was standing on the sales counter. Hopefully the fire inspector isn't listening to yeah. that. But, uh, you know, we were packing people in and it was so great because people really felt that sense of community. They saw us as experts and and people would come and gather. And you know what? There was probably, you know, half the people that just came to learn and they didn't buy, but then the other half did buy. But we created an experience and a reason for them to come into our business and a reason why they should shop with us rather than just trying to source things online without, you know, any knowledge. So, and they were around other like-minded people, you know, people want to go where other people are. There's just like a law of attraction there. You just, you want to be where other people are, you yeah. know, and it, it just, because I don't know if mentally it, it kind of verifies or, or justifies what you're thinking within your head uh, that other people, you know, Hey, I'm on the right path, but it, it, we did so many events that like, what, like breathing exercise, we did all kinds of cool stuff. And we just thought, Hey, what else might our customers enjoy? Yeah. You know, what else are they interested? In? Where else are they online in, in, in the real world? And so we've had yoga events, Wim Hof, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. The, the, the list is endless, but that was a big, big thing yeah. for us. And it, it, yes, they didn't buy right away, but these people came back afterwards. They had, you know, they, they had their questions answered. It was, it was fantastic. It really was. Yeah. So any sort of workshop, uh, 101 class, I mean, don't underestimate the people that would be interested in just a basic 101 class, you know, 101 on how to style your outfit, 101 on right. how to build XOIZ, how to decorate your home, how to, um, you know, just trying to think of all the various yeah, People like to but... get out now too, you know yeah. what I mean? It's people always looking for something fun, different, educational, and, you know some ways to interact in real life when you can charge for these classes oh yeah you know like yeah. you don't have to offer them for free you can charge and you know don't devalue your time and and effort there so for sure yes love that um what are some other ways kyle let's just rapid fire some here i mean any sort of community events are great those classes um you know having pop-up vendors yeah is a great one like just you know, when you go to places and all of a sudden there's extra vendors, like you get excited. You're like, Ooh, okay. Like, let me just do some shopping today. It gets you in that shopping mood. Um, you know, it, it changes up the experience in your store, adds more value. If you have vendors that, you know, let's say we're in the health and wellness world, we have another vendor that offers another health and wellness product. We're just bringing more value to our customers' lives. Right? Leveraging their network as well. Yeah. Another thing. Uh, another thing too, lighting was pretty big. Um, that's another thing that I'm that I, I really focus on, especially in the room, especially in the in the rooms. 
you know, you walk into and you're getting a massage and it's real bright and they're like, that ain't gonna fly. Like, yeah. you know, you want to create some contrast as well with the lighting. I'll turn the lights down in the shower room so that the, the paints pop and, and stuff like that. And and we have projectors that, you know, give off different light light structures and stuff like that. It's light lighting is is very key. Um, you know, do you want it to be a little softer? Or do you want it to be a little brighter so that they can clearly see where do you want to take their eye? You know, where is their eye drawn to? Where is your eye drawn to? Yeah. Um, you know, even like, I mean, in the summer, the sun comes barreling in through our front door or you know, through the front window. So lighting is going to be different in the mm -hmm. morning than it is in the afternoon. So we maneuver these and it you kind of, I've, I've caught an eye for it, but it's, you know, it's something also definitely to be considered. Lighting is huge for setting the tone and the mood right. of your business. You know, if you have lamps, it really cozies it up, makes them feel like they're in an right. intimate setting. If you have, you know, bright lights, you know, they're, right they're the gonna have like <laughs> energy. But, you know, if you offer like a fitness space, those bright lights and energy, it's going to be good, you know. So just really consider what the lights are like and how, you know, if they're beating on you and and like it it's not a pleasant experience right. so um yes take into consideration your lighting for sure um entertainment is huge too like this kind of goes with classes but you know you have some live music every once in a while or maybe you do a book signing or um just hosting like ways that people can come and have fun, you know. We um, sell parties. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, so it's we do spa events, spa parties. Yeah. Um, you could have a DJ on Saturdays yeah. or something while people shop. Like how fun would that be? I would totally go to a place just to have a DJ on while I was shopping. Or um, you know, there's just so many things. It, Cooking class. I mean, it's just yeah, yeah. It, was, it was yeah, it was, yeah. Um, on the visuals and artworks, murals are another great way to create that experience. That's people want murals are huge now. You know, everybody's like Instagram famous with their murals in the background, taking pictures with their friends and great way to grow your business right there with people taking pictures in front of a mural at your place. You don't have to, to, you know, pay some person to do some custom blah, 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 whatever. Like a lot of our mural I'm saying this with quotes, like it was wallpapers. I mean, yeah. it was just like the, yeah. the one, I mean, I know in, in the one room, it's like, it, that's all wallpaper that we purchased. Yeah. And it, love it's it. like some insane mural that somebody drew. No, it's, it's wallpaper. Yeah. So that was, you know, or like posters that are done in, in the correct way. You know, I'm, I think of like, you know, when I was in grade school with a, a old Lamborghini, when I were at the poster, you know, Kelly yeah. Ireland poster, but no, like, there's different ways to do that. You don't have to commission somebody for twenty five hundred dollars to paint some custom mural on. Yeah, you know? which would be cool. Don't get me wrong, but right. A couple other here. I we could. I feel like we could go on for a whole right. other hour here, but um, definitely dressing rooms. If you have any sort of apparel or things that can try on, you need to give people the ability to try them on. Like. You do not want to have a brick and mortar business where people are buying a product that they could try on, but they can't do it in your store. That defeats the whole purpose of being a brick and mortar business. So um, utilize those dressing rooms, but also like think of ways that you can customize. People can customize their products in your store. Can they add in an embroidered name or can they um, get a customized necklace made? Can they get a customized product built from you um and they come to your store to see all the examples but you build the customization for them um just giving them that more of that personalization in their store um personalized experience maybe you help them style an outfit maybe you help them um, come up with a sleep regimen with you know what products would help them and what services and you know Whatever that looks like, like consultations, personalizations, customizations, those are huge reasons why people would want to come and experience your business in person. You know, another thing, too, that you do very well, and we can button this up after, but the seasonal displays is another thing that you're really good about. Mm -hmm. The decor per season, I think. And, you know, now it's just kind of lather, rinse, repeat. Yeah. The, the different yeah. bins there. 
but you do a very good job and it, it ties in very well together with like sales and stuff that we're running. So it's all kind of in line. You know, that that's one big overarching thing with the experience. Like don't be running a beach day sale and you still got the Christmas stuff out. Like it's gotta all, yeah. you know, and then your logos are this, that, and the other. And on your TV screen, on your, your, you know, your camera roll, you're showing pictures in the fall, like make sure it all adds up and it adds to the extra, cause it's a shopping experience, you know, that it adds to the feel that you have. Like people come in and we got the Christmas tree and we got this and the, that, and it really just, it gets them in the mood to yeah. kind of, yeah. and then the drink maybe might be, you know, like a Hot cocoa, or cocoa something. or something. Yeah. Kind of keep that all tethered and make it like, that's the experience. Yeah. Think of it as an event, you know. Seasons really trigger buying. And Big time. Like, Big time. You th- like when we create, um, like, during the Christmas holiday season, we create that experience with presents and gifts. And now all of a sudden they're thinking about presents while they're in our store. And, you know, because we, we have a business that maybe wouldn't be for first come to mind when you think of gifts, but now they're, we're putting it in their mind oh, okay. that, Hey, you can create a gift basket here. Right. Um, and you know, same thing with like this summer when you have something like an umbrella or beach balls or, you know, then they're thinking about the heat in the summer. What do I need a uh, sunscreen? Or maybe I want to use the cold plunge or, you know, like things, of that nature, like whatever feeling that you can promote that matches your product seasonally is huge. Like Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, put those in people's minds with the seasonal displays. That was a great example. And the scenery at the store changes then a little bit too, that people like, they think it's funny. They don't see the same thing over and over again. Oh, I never saw that before. Or, oh, you know, people are like, I love your Christmas displays or I love your, and it's not like nativity scene or anything like that. It's very subtle and stuff like that but it just really sets the tone and gives them something a little i don't know sometimes i feel it's good to mix it up yeah um i obviously have the same overarching theme but yeah. it's nice that they just don't feel like they're coming to the same old same yeah. i mean i know some businesses that go so over the top for every holiday that people literally go just to see their holiday displays like that is their experience is is going to see those uh different seasonal displays so so much you can do with right. that yeah. Right. Man, we've gone over a lot of examples lot today. Of stuff, My challenge for you is to see if you can implement just one of these into your business, whether it's sampling station, a co-creation station, maybe start offering water or tea in your business. Can you add in a diffuser? Just choose one thing that we went over today that can start enhancing and promoting an experience and feeling in your business and see how it changes the experience. Just choose, start with one and grow from there. You don't, I don't want anybody getting overwhelmed thinking they need to implement all of these things at once. Just a little bit over time can really start to develop the experience in your store. And it'll allow you to track it as well. Did this work? Did this not work? If you sit here and you change everything all at once, you're not going to know which one really gave you that leverage Mm -hmm. that, that made that, you know, that made that change. Love it. We are so passionate about experiential retail. If you have any ideas and you want to throw them out there at us, we'd love, we'd love to hear them. Happy to always provide you your feedback. Um, In the brick and mortar business boot camp, we will be taking this a step deeper with a mood board workshop where you can really start to think about the colors and the visuals and the things that you want to offer to create a feeling. So join us for that boot camp. It's going to be a ton of fun. Anything else for us today? What, is, what date is that? That's on, we uh, are kicking that off on Tuesday, June sixth at twelve Central. Will be day one, but we are doing a um, a workshop each day: June sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. And the mood board workshop is on June twelfth. So register. We will be sending you emails with um, workbooks and keeping you updated on what time if they don't make it live they can also get the replays if i'm not mistaken as well right so you don't have to be i know it's in the middle of the day but if you guys want get signed up and then you can get it we can we'll send you the uh we'll send you the boot camp then yeah Uh, the replay yeah the replays Mm -hmm. that's Yeah. Got it. Well, we are pumped. We're excited yes we will um hopefully see all of you on june 6th
What else you got for us, Jojo? Take it easy, guys. Have a good day. Thanks for tuning in to the Receipt Paper Podcast, your go-to source of information for starting and growing a successful brick-and-mortar business. Subscribe to hear future episodes and share this content so that more people can access these valuable insights. If you're looking for more resources to help you with your brick and mortar business, visit masterbrickandmortar.com or follow us on Instagram at masterbrickandmortar. Thanks again for listening to the Receipt Paper Podcast. We'll see you in the next episode.